Hello everybody, JT here, back with another video. This video I will show you how you use a bar and meal to rub a part out. If you do a lot of surfacing, if you work with mold, if you make mold, or something like that, something involved in salt, I mean, uh, what is it, surfacing. And then you will find this one handy. Um, so let's just see here. This part here is very simple. Uh, this two pass apply to anything, but you know, uh, just apply to just apply to the part that you know. Uh, it complicated it is all uh, at symbol and it is like this one I don't have any complicated part but I would show you how to rub this out and then you can do this to make your program uh, this one is very symbol let's check something here flat okay 10 degree 45 okay so we are not gonna use the chamfer tool to do this one right we use surfacing because of this video video purpose right and then this one uh with this one it's gonna be hard to do surfacing like this so it probably better better if you use a five axis to finish this one so the bottom will be just basic and meal go in you know pocket finish this but i'll show you draw it out finish and by the end of this video i will show you a trick that you can uh finish just one area surface just one area right and then so stick to this video by the end of it you will see the trick all right so let's get to it let's create some tool here Bar and meal 125, I think good enough. Something like that's good enough. So pull it down. Okay, so the option here is surface and then advance, right? I mean, the surface, I think you can still use it like cut. Uh, yeah, uh, this one is the whole day, you know, the legacy two pass, but let's just you advanced so it had better control or something like that i don't really know deep into that but i usually do advanced okay the second one is light cut back in the day i think about five ten years ago i um make a lot of mold, thermoform mold, something like that, right? So we use a lot of uh, this kind of tool pass to rub it out. And back in the day, they didn't even have a, like volume meal like nowadays. So this is, I think this is the only way that I use to rub uh, mold, rub stock out, so. Uh, for this simple part, I mean, technically, you can use the uh, volume meal to rub out this one much farther and easier because it's very simple. But if you see some complicated mold, more detail, a lot of island, a lot of weird surfacing, and then volume meal could not do it. And then you have to use this kind of two pass to make to, to rub it out. Okay, but let's get to the detail here. I'll leave 20,000 for finish. Step over 50. Course, gonna start from zero and of whatever that is. Uh, step down, point one. I think this number here, you have to figure it out yourself because that is just personal reference our personal experience right so but typically if you use soft material you cut soft material you might go a little bit deeper faster if you 
machine on hard material of course it's gonna be slow down and you know step down less something like that so it depends on what you are doing but the concept is the same everything else here should be there for okay let's do source this instead of smooth because we want the two move from one to another with the sorted distance Okay, entry, I said sometimes I use both, but sometimes I use just vertical, so it depends. Okay, everything else should be the same. I don't see to, I don't need to change anything. Okay, now just select the whole thing. all right okay so i forgot to talk about the angle but let's just render and i will talk about this so you can understand okay so as you can see here it on this side good but over here you see it leave a lot of material right on both sides so let's see what angle i put in here zero okay so in this case you can use this to do another two pass at 90 right and then it should clean it out oh okay i forgot so in this case we have to do jet one because roughly all out okay so you can see that it's still a lot of material in this area right on the corner so it's gonna work harder for the neck two or for the finet two so let me tell you why i don't usually use zero or 90 okay so in here i usually don't use 90 or zero i mean technically i would say not like never it depends but I would say 95% of the time I don't use it. But I usually use 40 or 45. The reason is so the tool can go in here and cut most out of the material. So the finite tool pass, it doesn't work so much harder. Okay, so that's when I did 40, right? So this one I have to do negative 40. So it go on a different direction. So it clean out all the corner out. For this part, I don't think it will be much different, but you have a complicated part or something with the small radius, you will see the difference. But you can see, yeah, it's very much the same. But see, you you can see this corner head, you know, it will remove a little bit more uh, material out, right? Well, anyway, so that is the rough two pass when you want to rough out with the bar and meal, right? So let's go to the finish. The finish, I think... Let's finish the chamfer up top here. The bottom here is easy, right? Just go with an end mill and then finish with a pocket. Okay, so the finish to pass for this surface here, you this constant step cut, right? Of course, you're gonna leave all this to zero. You want better, right? You want a smooth finish. Everything else should be the same. 
Let's see what it does. Okay, so as you can see, when I put the boundary at the uh, part bounding box, it did this because it was looking like this at the whole surface. So I have to change it to see uh, or let or something like that. I can't even say the word. So let's redo it. See, that's much better. So, sometimes when you rough using the light cut, if you don't select something like this, it will just still doing it. But if you have this one go to this option, it will jump over. So, it depends, okay? But for now, just leave it like this. Only the finite tool pass. I need to change this to this option, and that will be finished. Okay. Okay. So again, this ten degree taper. It for this particular part, it had to fit it on the five axis machine. But here is the trick I was talking about. Let's say if you modify something or if you want to do a surface on one area only instead, but if it on like the, 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 the surface of that area is so big and you don't want to do the whole surface, let's say if for this part, right? let's say if this area you want to let me make some geometry first and then I will tell you right let's say if you finish this with the surface but you don't want to go all the way in here right uh, if you just want a partial of that area need to be surface and then this is how you are going to do okay let's say I can it the same so let's do this right okay so let's fin it within this uh, box okay and when you select the whole thing see this what this happened here okay and you can see it go all the way out there right okay But what if I don't want it? I just want that area only, right? And then the same two paths, I select that, but I also select that geometry and then redo it. It should be contained in that area. See that? Okay. So why? Because Sometimes when you finish, I remember like when I have a part, I finish everything with the end meal, so it fast, right? And then one area, it had a slope or something like that. And then I have to use two, I mean, I have to use surface in two paths to finish it. So instead of, I have to surface the whole big surface because that, that's how the model, draw, you know, draw. I don't want that because it's going to take forever and it 
waste time to do that. So I just draw a geometry around there and then I use that this two path and then use that geometry to contain the two path only in that area. And trust me, it's very handy and useful because I use it a lot. Okay, the same thing here. I mean, for this part, probably not going to do anything because this one is a separate uh, surface, right? But let's say if you just want a little bit in here, let me extract the geometry out. Okay. Uh, oh, and again, when you draw the geometry, you should overlap it a little bit. Okay, don't just extract the whole thing and then use it, because in that case, you know, sometimes it doesn't go all the way. But for this part, let's say if you don't want that whole thin uh, surface, right? And then you're going to limit it by, let's move this one in a little bit, minus 2. Okay. Plus 2. Just so you see the example of it. Okay, same thing here, I select that, the whole surface, but I limit it only that area. See that? So the two paths contain in that area only. Yep. See, it cut over, cut overlap here and there a little bit by 20,000, but you know, it depends on the geometry you draw. It may be contained, you know, in that area only. And sometimes it's not going to be completely what you want. And therefore, you have to draw a bigger geometry or something like that. But I think you get the idea, right? The purpose of this is just limit in that area. So you don't have to make the two paths uh, all over it because it's not necessarily something or somewhere that you finish with an end meal or with a contour already. And then only small area, you need to surface it. And this is how you use to control it, to contain within in that area. And yeah, I use a lot. So... All right, so hope you guys like it. Hope you guys get something out from this. And if you are watching and you are not subscribed yet, make sure you sub to my channel and turn on notifications so when I have new video, you can see it. And this trick is served me well over the you know last 15 years. So uh, see you guys next time and. Uh, Maybe next time I'll make a five axis to pass the finished wall here. And then you can uh, see how this one done on the five axis uh, machine. Uh, peace and see you again next time. Goodbye now.